Hello guys, welcome back. Now today, for July 4th, we're going to be talking about the top 10 American prospects in the NHL right now. Now, happy July 4th to everyone out there, especially my American listeners. I'm wearing my Darian Hatcher Stars jersey to commemorate this occasion, him being the first captain, or American captain, to win the Stanley Cup. And I thought, why not a good video to celebrate the 4th of July than to look at the best American prospects right now in the NHL. Now, some of these guys have played a little bit of NHL time, but none of them have played a full season. The most as one guy who had played 12 games. So a lot of these guys haven't even played an NHL game, but a lot of these guys are very, very promising. Now, the American side of things continues to expand in the NHL every single year, and we see that with this year's draft where there's, uh, I think there's a record amount of Americans drafted in the first round, something like that. There's a lot of Americans drafted in this year's NHL draft, and we just continue to see the American draftees grow and to see the development grow even further, which is fantastic to see. Now, I know this list can get pretty controversial, so let me know your top 10 down below, and let me know, of course, if I missed anyone. So at number 10, I have Adam Gaudet of the Vancouver Canucks. He's age 21. He's a center, 149th overall in the 2015 draft, an obvious steal looking back on it. Uh, in the NCAA this season, he had 38 games played, 60 points. He led the NCAA in points. Uh, he had in five games played in the World Junior Championships, or, he had, or in the NHL, he played five games. Didn't have any points, but apparently looked pretty solid defensively. And he's a guy that could be on the Vancouver Canucks next season. It kind of depends since now they now they signed both Jay Beagle and Roussel, so it kind of complicates things, So, but he might be on the NHL next season with the Vancouver Canucks, and if he does, I think he'll play well. He has some good talent, and I feel like he might not have that superstar talent, but he definitely is one of the guys on the list that has the most potential to have a solid NHL career and just maybe build a solid career for himself. He might not have the superstar talent, but I do believe that he can carve out a very, very solid career in the NHL, whether it be the Vancouver Canucks or any different team. He's a very solid two-way guy, he can bring some offense, and he's definitely a future, at least third liner for right, a lot of teams. I feel like he definitely fits that bill. He could be a potential second liner for a couple of seasons as well. He has a potential. I don't think he has superstar talent, but he definitely brings a lot of assets, and he definitely brings a lot to the game that a team like Vancouver Canucks are missing. I feel like they'd definitely be help help worthy with Goddard. Goddard brings a lot to the NHL. I feel like he has a lot of talent to bring a lot to it. Physicality, defense, and offense. He brings a lot of it. And while, again, he doesn't have that superstar talent, I don't believe, he brings a lot of solid opportunities and a lot of solid game. Next up at number nine, I have Keandre Miller, drafted by the New York Rangers, 22nd overall in this past 2018 draft. He's 18 years of age. He plays defense. In this last year in the USDP, he played 58 games at 29 points in the UCHL this season. He played 22 games, had 16 points in the World Junior Championships this season as well with the USA national team. He played seven games, had three points. And I feel like Keandre Miller has definitely some offensive talent, but the thing that you know brings me towards him is his defensive ability. He has a lot towards that and he has a lot of playmaking ability as well he's a guy who won't put too many points on the board and I feel like he'll have a definite indefinite defensive impact on the game he definitely brings a lot to that the physicality as well and he definitely can bring some offense I mean he's not that bad offensively either he can definitely bring that he brings a lot to the game and kind of like the defensive version of a lot of players he definitely has a lot of defensive ability but it can also bring the offense and he brings a lot to a game that New York kind of needs right now and again, kind of like Autumn Godet, where he doesn't have that superstar talent, but I feel like he could definitely be a solid top four guy for the New York Rangers. He has that talent level. He bring, can bring the defense, he can bring the offense, he can bring the physicality. He brings a lot to the game, and Keandre Miller is a different all-around guy that I feel will be a good player for New York, a solid player. I don't think he has a superstar talent, but I feel like he can bring a lot to a New York Rangers team that needs a lot from him right now. At number 8, I have Thatcher Demko of the Vancouver Canucks. Of course, him being the only goalie on this list, spoiler alert, but at age 22, he was drafted 36 overall in the 2014 draft. In the AHL this season, he had 46 games played, 2.44 in goals against average, with a 9 at 22 save percentage, um, and him being fantastic as well in the playoffs with Vancouver. And he definitely showed a lot of potential there, and he can definitely, definitely be in the AHL next season. It depends on Vancouver's goalie situation, but he played one game in the NHL, didn't look fantastic, but he definitely has potential to be on the NHL squad next season for the Vancouver Canucks, and he has solid starter potential. He's probably the guy for the future of Vancouver, and he definitely has shown the potential in the AHL and every, every league that has really played, and he has that potential to be a very, very solid starter. 
starter in the NHL, and he's really the only hope for goalies in the American system. So Patrick Demko definitely leading that, but he definitely has a lot of potential as a starter and possibly an elite goaltender for a couple of years. He definitely has that potential, and I do believe that he does have the potential, whether it be the Vancouver Canucks or another team. I feel like he does have the potential to be one of the best goalies in the league. It all depends on how he develops, of course, with Vancouver Canucks. But at age 22, you're going to start to see him a little bit more and more as the year goes by. You know, you don't want to rush goaltenders, but you'll start to see him a lot more in the next couple of years because he's starting to get up there in age. I think that he is ready for the NHL. It depends on if the Vancouver Canucks are going to give him the opportunity. But I feel like he does have the potential to be a starter and possibly the lead goaltender. I think he has that ceiling. Next, at number 7... I have Joel Faraby drafted 14th overall by the Philadelphia Flyers in this past 2018 NHL draft. He's 18, he's a left winger, and he's a perfect Philadelphia Flyer. When he got drafted by the Flyers, I'm like, okay, that is literally as perfect as he gets. Faraby is a perfect guy for that organization. He brings a lot of game that is similar to what the Flyers have been doing for a little while. In the USDP this season, he had 62 games played, 26 or 76 points, and the USCHL had played 26 games, had 40 points, and were during the championship. Chips. He had seven games played with eight points. He's been a dominating offensive force when in the American system and with the American national team, and he brings a lot of physicality as well. He's a good all-around player. He needs to work a little bit on defense, I'd say, but offensively, he definitely is gifted. And physicality, he's definitely there. He's a guy that can bring a lot to a team, and for the Philadelphia Flyers, he's a perfect flyer. And for Farabee, he definitely brings a lot to the game that I feel like will be an offensive force for the future. I feel like he definitely has top six potential to be one of those guys like a Matthew Kachuk. Not quite as feisty and not quite as much of a pest, but definitely have the similar game of the physicality, both in the physicality and the offense. With Joel Farabee, I think he has a fantastic future with Philadelphia, and again, as I said before, he's a perfect Philadelphia Flyer, so I think he'll fit in quite nicely with Philadelphia. He has a good future there, and I feel like he could be there for his entire career and play pretty well throughout this whole career there. I feel like he has some great potential. At number six, I have Ryan Donato, the guy who's played the most NHL games out of anybody on this list. Uh, he is age 22, a center, and of course on the Boston Bruins, 56th overall in the 2014 draft. In the NCAA this season, he played 29 games, 43 points, but on the Bruins, he came up, had played 12 games, and had 9 points. He was really fantastic throughout the regular season when he played with the Boston Bruins. He was just amazing. And I got to see a lot of those games. Fortunately, I got to see a lot of Ryan Donato, too. And they didn't seem to play him in the playoffs that much, which sucks. But he got a lot of time in the regular season, and I feel like he was a dominating force there. Uh, number six, that's definitely fantastic for him. Ryan Donato has a lot of potential, top six potential, I'd say. He definitely shown what he can be made of with the Boston Bruins this past season. In the 12 games, he was fantastic. And I got to see a lot of those games. He was just a dominant force, it seemed like. And he was like, he seemed like a veteran in the league. He was amazing. He was fast. And Ryan Donato has definite top six potential, and definitely with the Boston Bruins, he's a fantastic player there. With Ryan Donato, he, I don't think he has the top, top superstar talent, but he definitely can be a very, very good top six guy for the future for the Boston Bruins or any other team. He definitely has the potential. He's already shown it in the NHL so far, and it could be another guy like a Brock Besser who got the opportunity in the NHL for the last part of the season and then comes up in the next season and absolutely dominates. It could be interesting to see what he's going to be made of next season, but he's looking to be a dominant force in the NHL already. At number five, I have Brady Goodchuck, and while I'm not the biggest fan of him, he definitely has good potential. Uh, he, of course, he's 18 over 18 years of age, drafted fourth overall by the Ottawa Senators in the 2018 NHL Draft. He's a left winger. In the NCAA this season, he played 40 games, 31 points. And we're doing the championships. He had seven games played, had nine points. So at a young age, he's already been dominating offensively. Again, that kind of like another guy like Joel Baraby. He brings a lot to the game physicality-wise. He's great in that aspect, and he can bring a lot more offense. I see a lot. I feel like he has better potential than a Joel Baraby, but I feel like he has a lot more overall game as well. He brings a lot of offense. Defensively, he's fantastic too, and that's something that Joel Verby kind of lacks there. He has a lot of all-around game and can bring a lot to the team. I don't think he's going to be a superstar, but I feel like he's going to be one of the sure bets to make the NHL and have a solid career. I feel like he's not going to be a fourth overall pick looking back on it, but I feel like he'll be a solid guy throughout the NHL. I don't think he'll have superstar talent, but he'll have an amazing career. I feel like he can play a lot of games and be very, very solid for every team he goes on. And of course, having the mentorship of Keith Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk ain't bad either. 
At number four, I have Kiefer Bellows of the New York Islanders. He was at the 19th overall in the 2016 NHL Draft. He's 20 years of age, left winger, uh, and the WHL this season with the uh, Winterhawks, I think they're called, uh, he had 56 games played, 74 points, and at World Junior Championships this season, he had 60, or he had 7 games played with 10 points. In the World Junior Championships, I got to see a lot of him, and he was a dominating force, one of the best guys for the USA team, and he was amazing in that aspect. In the WHL, he was putting up great numbers as a 20-year-old, and he definitely has great potential. The New York Islanders, he's one of their big, big shining lights in that organization that they kind of need right now to replace that John Devere's hole. I feel like Bellows has a lot of potential as an offensive guy, but also brings some defense as well. He's a good all-around player, and the offense, of course, is there. The potential offensively is there, so it's going to be interesting to see how he develops, if he develops, and if he makes the NHL. It's going to be interesting to see how he gets there, too, because he has a tough road. So Bellows, I feel like he has great potential as an offensive guy, but as a defensive guy too. Where the offense, though, is definitely gifted and one of the better guys on this list, and he can definitely bring a lot to the NHL. At number three, we have a back-to-back -back New York Islanders picks, Oliver Wallstrom. Wallstrom being drafted 11th overall in the 2018 draft, 18 years of age, right winger. Uh, in the USD and the USDP this season, he played 62 games and 94 points, which was absolutely domination, by the way. Uh, the USHL, he played 26 games and had 45 points. So he was just straight amazing wherever he went. The championships, he played seven games, had nine points. He was just brilliant offensively wherever he he wins, and you just look at the highlights, you just look at the games that he played, he would be all over the ice, and he would just be amazing giftedly. His shot is amazing, his passing is amazing, his all-around offensive ability is straight elite, and he'll definitely be a first-line center, or not a first-line center, a first-line player for years to come with the New York Islanders. He definitely has potential, and I think he's going to Boston College or something like that for the next couple of years, but when he gets into the NHL, when he gets into that force, when he gets back to the NHL, he'll be a driving force. He'll be probably one of the best guys offensively in the league. I feel like he has that potential. Oliver Wallstrom being a pretty good steal at 11th overall. I feel like a lot of teams will be regretting that pick going forward. And I feel like Oliver Wallstrom definitely has that elite potential offensively to make a lot of teams doubtful. But Oliver Wallstrom, one of my favorite players on this list, he has a ton of potential. The New York Islanders, they're already an offensive-minded team, so he's just going to fit right in with that team and be an absolute monster straight off the bat, and I definitely believe that he's going to be a force to be reckoned with straight off the bat. At number two, I have Quinn Hughes of the Vancouver Canucks, drafted seventh overall in the 2018 draft course. He's a defenseman. In the NCAA this season, he played 37 games, had 29 points. In the Virginia Championships, he played seven games, I had three points. But the thing that puts him over, you know, Wallstrom up for me is just because he has already shown the elite offensive ability as that defenseman. Quinn Hughes has already shown what he's made of offensively as that defenseman, and he's just looking fantastic as a guy that could just come in the angel and just dominate. I feel like he might not be there in year one for the Vancouver Canucks, but I feel like if he gets one more year to develop and then goes to Vancouver Canucks, he's going to be straight amazing. He has great defense as well. That's why he was picked so high, but because he has elite offensive ability and elite defensive ability. He can bring both to the game, and that's what Vancouver really needs going forward is a guy like Quinn Hughes to bring that. Quinn Hughes is a perfect fit for Vancouver as well. He brings a lot of offense that they need, and for Quinn Hughes, his all-around ability is straight fantastic. His passing is amazing. His shot is fantastic. His overall creativity is great as well. The NCAA, he was just dominating on a bad team. So I feel like Quinn Hughes will just, you know, be a fantastic player for years to come. For Vancouver, they need an elite defenseman like that, and they finally get it with him. But with Quinn Hughes, he led that Michigan team to the Frozen Four, I'm pretty sure, and they were one of the best teams there. And Quinn Hughes was obviously the dominating force there. He was their best player, and he showed that throughout the whole season with them, and was an absolute force to be reckoned with. And I feel like that'll definitely be the same in the NHL. It might take a couple years for him to develop cor correctly and to really get his game going in the NHL, but once he does that, I feel like there's nothing stopping him. Now, last but not least, at number one, I have on the Buffalo Sabres, Casey Middlestats. Now, 
I got the opportunity to see a few Buffalo Sabres games at the end of the season, not in person, but on TV, and the games that Casey Middlestat was playing was absolutely brilliant. Now, Casey Middlestat is regarded as one of the best prospects in the NHL alone, not even just American prospects, in the NHL alone, and he's already shown what he can ma be made of in the NHL already. Uh, of course, him being the 8th overall pick in the 2017 draft, he aged 19 as a center, uh, and NCAA, he played 34 games a season, uh, had 30 points, but the NHL, he played 6 games and had 5 points. But the Buffalo Sabres, he was just straight amazing offensively, and we saw what he was made of. He was scoring goals like amaz amazingly, and he could just bring that offense. In the NCAA, he wasn't like terribly amazing, but when he got the jump to the NHL, he just looked like he was there, he has been there for like 10 years. He looked like a natural already, and Casey Middlestat definitely has that potential, and he's already regarded as one of the best prospects in the NHL, let alone American prospects. He definitely deserves to be number one, and it's going to be exciting to see what the opportunity for him will be like next season. He's going to be in the NHL next season, don't get me wrong, because Ryan O'Reilly has been traded from Buffalo. That could perhaps make some space for Casey Middlestat to get a lot more time next season, and to get a lot more points, because he's already shown that he's NHL ready. And for Casey Middlestad, he's already shown that he can play amazing on a terrible Buffalo team. And we can definitely see him having a great offensive performance next season, as well as the Buffalo Sabres perhaps being a lot better, hopefully. So Casey Middlestad has already shown that he's already been an actual ready player. And he can already bring in at age 19 and already look amazing. He was almost a point per game at age 19 on the terrible Buffalo Sabres team. It's going to be interesting to see how well he can adapt next season when he's a year older and on a probably better Buffalo Sabres team. Hopefully, we can see next season of Katie Missiles. Casey Middlestat, he's going to get more playing time as well, which will just unleash his inner monster out into the NHL. And I'm hoping that he has a great bounce back performance, or not bounce back, but a breakout performance. And there's hoping that, of course, the Buffalo Sabres are a lot better because of it. But Casey Middlestat, already known as one of the best prospects in the NHL, let alone American prospects, and it's pretty much a unanimous number one. Casey Middlestat has shown that he definitely belongs there. He's already shown that he's NHL ready, and the all-round ability offensively, defensively, he's just an amazing, amazing prospect. He definitely deserves to be number one on my list, on a lot of other people's lists. He definitely has shown the talent level, both in NCAA, the NHL, and all the leagues that he's already performed in. So for the NHL, watch out. There's obviously a ton of great American prospects coming up for the systems. It might not be as good as the Canadian system or whatever, but they definitely have a lot of superstars coming up, a lot of great talents coming up, and it'll just continue to get better. As the years go on, we'll see a lot more American guys come up, and the Olympic, and Olympic American team in like 2024 could be absolutely disgusting. Just looking at the prospects now and looking at the potential prospects in the future, you got Jack Hughes as well, who could be another prospect going in the future. The American team could be absolutely disgusting, and I'm hoping that it does because let's go, America. But that's going on for today, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below what you think of my list. What do you think of the future of America in the NHL and the future of the American prospects that I listed here already? And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.